Hello, Mioni here, and welcome back to another video for Final Fantasy XIV. This then a predictions video for the letter from the producer live taking place this Friday, September the 17th at 7 p.m. PDT. There'll be a link in the description of this video to the actual uh, Lodestone link with all of the information on when that will be uh, live in your own regional equivalency and also links to the various platforms they're streaming on including YouTube live Nico Nico and Twitch all of those pages will be linked so I wanted to put out a predictions video because well a quite a few people have got their own predictions and I wanted to solidify mine of what I'm expecting from the live letter what I would like to see from the live letter and things we won't see from a live letter so firstly I think it's easy enough to go what we won't see in the live letter. I would probably put all of my coupon nuts on basically uh, we not seeing anything other than the class and battle changes. Um, I find it very unlikely that we'll see anything tangible about Endwalker itself in terms of locations or dungeons or maybe even uh, not even like island sanctuary or cities or anything like that that will probably be reserved for the uh, undisclosed at this time presumably uh, within the next few months media tour and also uh, subsequent media that comes out of uh, of square enix leading up to uh, sort of like october i would imagine definitely uh, sort of like mid-october i'm feeling like we're gonna have the uh, next live letter after this one somewhere in the sort of start or mid of October probably detailing a lot more about Endwalker and the actual things like Island Sanctuary and a lot more actual content uh, about that sort of time so I don't think we're going to get any meat and potatoes sort of content like this is what this looks like are we getting a deep dungeon all of those questions probably won't be answered in this live letter I would probably I, I don't know, I'd probably stake everything on that not happening. What will happen then is most likely four hours of live letter discussing class changes, battle changes, and any other changes they have to the core combat system of the game. So things they could have done, um, maybe something to do with role actions. That is something that a lot of people are talking about, the idea of what's going to happen with that next. Maybe we'll see more information about that. Me personally, I liked it before when there was a little bit more freedom with choosing actions, but at the same time, I again liked it when they took away that uh, freedom of choice and made it just accessible and some things were just built in. That's one of the things that surprised me i didn't think that i would have liked but i ended up liking overall one thing i am looking forward to though is seeing the many hours of discussing each individual job we know for a fact since there are going to be 19 jobs now if you include sage and reaper that's where the majority of the time of this live letter is most likely going to be sunk into so we'll probably have class trailers so job job action trailers um That'll probably be the first thing we see, and then probably a breakdown of those individual jobs. So I think the live letter will open with a trailer for the new job actions. You'll be like, whoa, what, what just even happened in that? Then Yoshi P and Foxconn, presumably, will go through um, each of those pieces that were shown and describe what's happening to each job. So they'll go... Black Mages, nothing. <laughs> That's what I think anyway, because Black Mage isn't really something that necessarily needs to be uh, touched or changed that much. I think that's the general consensus from people I know that play Black Mage, and I think that it's in a good place. But it'll be interesting to see what they do towards Black Mage. The ones I'm more interested in looking at are things like Bard, Summoner, um, definitely the healers, myself being a, a healer main. I want to see what Sage has under its belt, and I also want to see what they're doing with White Mage, Scholar, and Astro, seeing which one, you know, how they basically are going to deal with introducing Sage and how they're going to make Scholars feel, and how they're going to make Astrologians feel, and how that might affect the dichotomy between those particular healers. Is it going to be the fact that Sage comes along and just blows everything out of the water, with its shield healing, or is it going to give the other shield healer a chance? That's something that we can only tell during this, and I think that will answer that question. 
Things to bear in mind, however, although visually and like on paper, it may reveal that answer, everything that's written on paper or shown to us in a slide does not necessarily reflect what it will feel like in the game. So one of the worst things you could possibly do is take anything from the live letter as 1000% sealed in stone because there's a lot of feedback that's going to come from this. There's a lot of other eyes that are going to be on this over the next few weeks are going, wow, they really did screw such and such job. I need to now change what I play. And people will be making that meta knee jerk reaction before we can even play the jobs themselves. So until eventually when this becomes, uh, I don't know, when somebody gets to play this, if there is going to be a media tour, then if somebody plays a job and they find out for certain what it feels like, until that point, we can't really be like, oh, well, this feels slower or this is weaker now or what's this new ability do? We can only theory craft. And theory crafting, especially for new players to the game, you really shouldn't base everything that people talk about and analyze and overanalyze on your own choices of what you play. Now, some people will be thinking about their world firsts on clears, they'll be theorizing stuff. Most of it will be inaccurate based on the fact there's no human component. So they'll have basic stuff. If they, for example, show a screenshot of, I don't know, a fireball or whatever, doing X, uh, fire four doing X amount of damage even after the item squish, as soon as they show that screenshot, if it has numbers of any sort of decree on screen, then people will go, oh, well, Wow, Fire 4 is only doing 34,000 damage and then realizing actually that's a massive amount and then going, oh wow, they've buffed potency here and this just doesn't fit with the scaling. Until we play the game, none of those numbers are going to make sense. And that's fundamentally even more important now thanks to the, um, the item squish, right? So there is going to be a stat squish in this expansion that does change the way things look and feel. It's not supposed to take away from that feeling, but when you see a number that's 2,000 damage, when previously it was like, I don't know, what, 20,000 damage? Is that fair as an analogy? I don't know, let me know in the comments. You shouldn't feel let down by that number. There's no real way for us to gauge what that number even means in comparison to other things unless we have that baseline of being to pl uh, able to play the game and compare it. So that's something that you need to take from this, a pinch of salt. If there are any screenshots or any uh, pieces of footage where something looks um, like it's exploding or maybe that uh, there's damage number on screen like, whoa, that's a lot of damage or maybe they show like a demo or something of someone playing a class and you're like, wow, that's a lot of damage or wow, they hit like nothing, like a wet noodle. Bear in mind, nothing is final in terms of that and you don't know how much health the monster has. We, we really don't have that kind of experience. Usually with other MMORPGs, you'd have a public test realm, uh, especially for World of Warcraft, right? Where you'd be able to go on there and test those numbers. But we don't have that for this game, so we really need to be careful what we look at and um, before we jump the gun and make accusations or, you know, but it's going to happen anyway. People will make that whole jump into the bandwagon. Oh, it looks like scholars getting screwed. Da, 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 da. Unless it's based on actual, like, if they go over actual numbers and what those mean, we're not going to have the context for them. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I'm more interested in Bard specifically. I think that's the one that really ticks my box of wanting to know more about. I feel personally, as someone who used to love Bard and still thinks Bard's quite fun to this day, I think that Bard is missing a point. It feels like they should either give us back our songs and give it more of a, like a dancer feel, or they should put it into a full DPS uh, point of view alongside Machinist. I feel that it hits slight marks, but it misses any kind of mastery of those two directions. And I'm not sure if that's intentional, but it feels a little bit middle of a road, feels a little bit unimaginative. I personally am one of the people that misses um, the Bard songs actually having some kind of meaning to them, actually having more impact on the fight. And after playing Dancer for a long time, I eventually ended up 
gravitating towards playing my dancer a lot more than playing my bard for that fizz range slot of choice when I do content, you know, regardless of what it is. It just feels like I'm benefiting, or if I want to do incredible DPS, then I will most likely play Machinist. So I'm interested to see what they do for Bards, what love they give them. I would like to see what they do for Scholar, because Scholar sorely needs uh, more love. I think we've talked about this several times before. I don't think that Scholar is in Shadowbringers in a place that it needs to be. I think the homogenization of the fairies, Eos and Selene was a bad decision. I'm one of those people, I'm sorry. I don't think that you should be taking that freedom away from people but at the same time if you are going to take it from them give them something in return for that it just feels like now Celine and eos are just glamours they don't serve a purpose and this is you know doubly so with other other healers such as astrologian astrologian's cards they are good i enjoy playing astro at the moment but it's not the best it's ever been. Now, the argument previously was that Astrologian cards were too hard to remember, or that it was too complex. I really don't think that was the case. Um, and even if that is the case, we have jobs in the game like Monk and Ninja, which require much more of a, of a, of a skill ceiling than anything else in the game, it's fair to say. You know, Monk is... To me, personally, I'm not very skillful at fast inputs or remembering long combinations and stuff like that. Monk is something that is like, I respect it, I think it's awesome, but I really suck at it, right? But I respect it for being a little bit more taxing. I could get good at that if, you know, I had the time to put into it. But like I say, I main healer, I choose the jobs that I'm more comfortable with to, to do content with. So... Is it really a problem for one of the healers to be of a slightly higher skill shield? Uh, skill, skill shield? I'm not sure what a skill shield is. A skill ceiling. You know, why can't we have those cards, um, you know, actually doing things individually? Um, it, it, it just feels like, you know, even as a, a basic astrologian, you can get away with just... As long as you press cards and use them... You can get away with uh, with anything, whereas previously it was a little bit more forethought was needed. Otherwise, you were you know pretty much in a in a group with a bad astrologian, right? But that's what I would like to see. I would like to see less homogenization. But if we do see homogenization added to jobs across the board and more simplification, I want there to be other ways to make it complicated or other ways to add to it. So. More often than not, I stray away from the hype about new spells, right? New abilities. It's hard to not be excited about a new spell and a new ability. But at the same time, you know, I've played a white mage. We, we haven't really had many new spells in a, in a long time. We had, um, I mean, we have actually, but it's the core concept didn't change. What they did is they added to the core concept without taking anything from it, which I think is the best solution, really in my opinion. I mean, you might disagree, but um, I'm looking forward to see what they add without, you know, making that the only button on the bar that's worthwhile. Uh, it's all very well adding a new spell that's like uber powerful, but if they don't do enough to the previous stuff, um, you know, to the previous abilities to make them suit, then it's just it just feels like a one hit, waiting for that one button to press sort of thing. But uh, they did say originally a Yoshi P. I can't, I mean, I'm paraphrasing because I can't find the exact quote again, but I think it was in an interview or something that Yoshi P said originally that he wanted every single job to have something that made them feel as special as Passage of Arms, right? They want everybody to have a flashy ability like Passage of Arms. So Passage of Arms is the wonderful shield ability uh, from Paladin. It is the one where the big wings explode from them and they force the shield forwards and people stand behind it it's it's awesome it really is awesome it looks amazing but for people to have one of those abilities are we not going down the route of just adding those abilities because they look cool or are they actually going to serve a purpose so i don't really know what else to expect other than new flashy buttons hopefully less homogenization but at the same time love to those classes uh, well jobs that need it most 
What am I hoping for for my own main job? Because I'm a main healer, but I play a lot of white mage uh, pre predominantly. I personally want them to remove Asylum from the game. I think that it serves very little purpose, does very little healing, and they could just get rid of it or replace it with a completely different AoE and we'd be fine. Even if we wanted to get rid of Button Bloat, just delete Asylum and put something else there if I want to, or just leave it off and then add something to another spell. It really doesn't bother me. Um, it's one of the spells that when I do use it, it doesn't seem to really do that much. Uh, it's a positional thing. It requires people to be inside of it. It doesn't heal for that much. It really doesn't, I mean, it doesn't offer a shield you know that's 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 weird that's really weird but uh yeah i do think though other things will be like you know how divine venison is basically um you know basically a single target shield it's a massive massive heal i i do think that other healers will probably get something like that i would imagine sage will probably have something like that as well but uh yeah i'm looking forward to seeing what healers come out with but um a summoner especially i would love to see what happens to summoner I think when it comes to Summoner, there are many things on people's wish list, and I don't know if we're going to get many of them, but at the moment, it's not its not its most comfortable that it's ever been, I think we can say, so hopefully they get some love. Overall, though, I think the majority of jobs will see some drastic changes. I'm, I'm expecting some jaw-dropping moments. They always like to um, surprise us, but I don't think we're going to see any major surprises with stuff like white, white mage or black mage, that sort of stuff. Um, you know, those, those things are quite well established. Maybe some new exciting things, but we recently got some pretty powerful stuff, so I'm not really sure what else they could add to it. But um, I don't know, maybe Ultima or Demi Ultima for a black mage? That would be rather entertaining, wouldn't it? Or maybe it'll just be another rank of fire. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, I'm ex extremely excited. I don't think there will be anything other than about four hours of, of job uh, adjustments and combat and battle changes. Bear in mind there are 19 jobs in the game now. That's excluding Blue Mage, obviously. 19 jobs that are going to be level 90. That's um, that's quite a significant number. But uh, let's say they, I don't know, imagine if they did like 30 minutes on each. That's still going to lead you up to a significant time. So they're going to be blasting through these, you know, in probably like 10 minute chunks. It's going to be quick and there's going to be lots of people making notes on this and trying to absorb as much information as possible. So whilst there will be some probable mistakes uh, from people, um, when we try to bring all this in. At least this time we have live English translation, so that will help things become a lot more clear. Uh, there'll be less room for mistranslation, and um, it, it should be a lot easier for, for people like myself to put together some kind of summary video. In terms of a summary video, there will be something on the channel. I will try and do a general summary, but if they do go through every single job, then we're probably going to have job specific videos rather than just one video that's a, the forewarning we can't summarize something that's 10 minutes into you know that's four hours into 10 minutes you know it's going to be like like 19 10 minute chunks basically that's, this is just not going to work so i'll do my best i'll see what i can do and it's going to be a very late morning or early day for me so don't expect too many more videos this week unfortunately i do have to prepare mentally and sort my sleep pattern out because it's at like three or four in the morning until the early hours of the next day so that's going to be quite interesting <laughs> as usual thank you so much for watching enjoy the rest of your day let me know what your predictions are in the comment section below what you're looking forward to the most from the combat battle changes or anything else that i haven't mentioned and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.